Thank you. I think I will need your guidance throughout for other moments as well. Um, appreciate that. Uh, Good morning, everyone. I am calling the Pen One uh, board meeting to order and uh, need to announce that this meeting is being recorded. And do, and then do I need to run through attendance? I'm trying that would to be great. Do I need to run through the folks who are not here? Yes. Okay. Um, James Allison. That he will not be in attendance. Uh, Claudio Camposano. Present. Jeff Noodleman. Present. And my apologies, my brain is four ways right now. Can PJ you read my Christopher. Me? Thank you. PJ Christopher. And he is not able to attend. And yourself. Uh, Annalisa Curler and uh, secretary and I am present. Um, I think thank, we now Thank you for taking this on. I appreciate you doing that. <laughs> Uh, it looks like next up on the um, agenda is public testimony. And I don't see any members of the public here and I have no indication that anyone wants to testify. Okay, wonderful. Um, then moving on to item C on our agenda. Um, Bill, I will let you take it away to talk about the PIR pump station. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, thanks for the opportunity to talk about this um, very important asset of your of your districts. Um, hopefully you had a chance to glance through the, the summary page ahead of time. Um, but as you have heard, the district and the city of Portland have jointly submitted a, uh, an application uh, for grant funding through FEMA's program um, to, um, to build a, a brand new pump station uh, at uh, the PIR site. And um, unfortunately, James Allison is not in attendance today, but he has been integral as part of that process. Um, but part of that conversation uh, during the development of that grant and afterwards, uh, James um, gave us the impression that uh, city council is likely going to ask who is going to own this new pump station once it is uh, built. And um, it, they, the one scenario is that they may ask that that statement be included uh, in uh, an IG, future IGA. Um, if we are lucky enough to get the grants and the city is willing to provide the local match, um, council may be of, may have an interest in, um, in either stating that the pump, who's gonna be owning, owning the pump station uh, or note that ownership is uh, in question and will be negotiated as part of, uh, of the, the agreement. So uh, I'm here today to uh, offer uh, my opinion and opinion of staff um, for you all to consider um, that uh, the Pen 1 district um, take ownership of that asset long term. And there are a couple of reasons why I, I, I feel that way and uh, outlined in, the, in that, uh, that summary state, uh, summary memo. Um, this pump station is the downstream end of the entire district with the exception of some of the properties up on Marine Drive that drain directly to uh, the Columbia River. But with the, those exceptions, and, and that's a decent amount of area, um, everything else drains to this point. And as a drainage um, district, uh, and one that also um, uh, maintains the levee system, that pump station is the only way for the water to get up and over the, up the levee. You all know that. Um, and uh, it feels like as such that that type of acid is integral to the drainage of, of um, the completion of the drainage of uh, Pen One, so uh, areas do not flood. And so it would, I feel that um, having some control over that asset um, long term um, would be a value to the bent, to the um, uh, to the district. Um, I and I guess a little a little ironically, the um, your district already lists. 
uh, this asset in your property schedules that's found in your annual audits uh, and, and in other insurance policies. So you're already so, sort of um, acknowledging that you have some responsibility there and you certainly do uh, with regards to uh, maintenance uh, and uh, tracking of condition and so forth. Um, but what I'm here today to do is ask uh, for your guidance uh, and consideration that, that you can provide direct staff um, if you agree to start negotiating with um, the city about long-term ownership, Pen One's long-term ownership of that assets and things that we would want to make sure that we would include in the negotiation or factors such as the the pump station is built per current design standards, um, that property agreements are set in place um, so that once the, prop, the pump station is operational, either the district owns the land or has a sufficient easement um, to access that pump station uh, in the future. Currently, we have you have no easement to that pump station. Uh, we just have a good working relationship with the city um, to go into that site and do work. Um, there actually is uh, an agreement with DSL, Oregon DSL, um, with regards to the discharge of water getting into the Columbia Slough. So that's something we'll have to investigate regardless of, of ownership um, in, the, in the future. But um, yeah, so my proposal is um, for you all to consider that um, the district takes on ownership um, long term, um, but do so in a manner that we negotiate with the city about the conditions of that ownership, the things I just talked about and other things that you might that may come to mind to you as well. Any type of uh, final agreement couldn't be passed until um, you'll have a chance to look at it and, and comments on the, on the contents. So I'll stop there and uh, hope to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Bill. Um, questions from board members? I'll uh, kick it off. Thanks, Bill. It was always great, great summary and I appreciate the written report as well. Um, a couple things. Number one, and it may be buried in there and I apologize. The other pump stations, it, who owns them currently? Oh, the other pump stations in Pen One or in the other district? Yeah, yeah, let's just focus on. Well, it, that's a very good question. I, I guess I'm just focused on Pen One, but it, sure. it, your question is probably the better one. So go ahead. So let me start with Pen One and I'll, I'll uh, then tangent into the other districts. You only, there are only two stormwater pump stations um, that at least we know of. There may be some small ones on sites um, that's, uh, individual property owners deal with, but there's only two, one PIR pump station uh, and Vanport pump station. Uh, Vanport pump station is on um, Port of Portland property. Um, there's no clear ownership for that one either, um, but it it pumps primarily um, Port of Portland um, runoff from the Port of Portland. However, there are there is drainage from um, Metro's property at the Expo Center, as well as some right of way uh, that drains in there. I think that's, ODOT, that's ODOT right of way, is that right? Uh, it's a mix, actually. Yeah, ODOT right of way does drain in there, but also City of Portland right of way does drain there as well. Um, we haven't taken a position um, that we, as staff, uh, feel like we own that pump station. Um, the Port of Portland bought that property uh, from the previous owner, um, and to us, the pump station came with the property. Um, so um, we are in conversation with the port about, um, about replacing that pump station because it is in a similar structural condition as PIR. Uh, and so it definitely needs um, some help. So, um, and, and so the negotiation is happening right now with, with port staff and I'll circle back with you and uh, probably in, it may not be um, the spring, but in, in the future, I will circle back to you with a proposal about that site. Pump stations in the other districts, uh, let me characterize them by between uh, external pump stations and internal. External pump stations are those at the very, uh, that are right next to the levee system. Uh, so the pump station at our office at Penn, uh, Pump Station 1 um, is owned um, by MCDD 
And in fact, all pump stations that are next to the levees are owned by those districts. Internal pump stations is a, ownership is a mix. Um, there are some that are owned by the districts. Um, pump station one and Broadmoor pump stations and MCD are owned by the districts. Um, but there are others that are owned by private facilities, uh, private, private property owners, uh, and MCD maintains them uh, through IG or through legal agreements. For that purpose. Did that answer your question? Yeah, excellent. And that, that you you left off exactly where I was going as if it was scripted. So, you know, in my pea brain, separate and apart from the specific topic we're talking about. You know, ownership then would imply, look, I own it, I got to take care of it. Okay, you know, and that means pay for repairs, maintenance, replacements, et cetera. So um, I, I guess where I'm going is, are, are, does the city, if the city wants to, well, we don't know. I, I guess there's too much, a little bit of speculation, but if we own it, all right, and I understand, you know, the, how things work well enough that we are basically that particular pump station, especially, but you know, the district, all the district, take a lot of water from a lot of places. We don't just take the water from within our specific boundaries on the pretty little map inside the MCDD uh, offices there. So to that point, you know, it is not only a a city county, metro, state, regional issue, it's look, you know, we're all in this together and, you know, to avoid catastrophe, et cetera, we all need to pitch in and make sure these pump stations and the levees are all working well, okay. That said, when it comes time to pay the freight, said, uh-oh, you know, this pump station ain't working. And me as the owner, I got to fix it. I mean, I would think that's my responsibility, but I'm going to then have to put my hand out and say, okay, um, sure, I own it, uh, but I'm helping out the entire community here. So everybody has to pay. So to your point about intergovernmental you know, agreements and et cetera, it just concerns me that we don't have something defined or working backwards. What is our goal? If we want to own it, then we sure as heck better be prepared to take on the full cost of maintaining, replacing, repairing. That, and that's in my mind, because we can't make promises for other people. So, you know, if others own it, be it the city or whomever, I would look to them and say, look, you want it? You got to take care of it. You know, we'll, quote, operate it for you under an IGA or what have you. But, I mean, I think it's, it's an important, important part of this whole puzzle um, because these things are going to keep, you know, at least the ones that are there, uh, the other one, too, going to keep deteriorating. This one, we know the history of. I mean, you've been talking about this one. For as long as I've been on the board, so and it's no surprise we know this has been coming. So uh, I, I guess that was incredibly long-winded to say. So what what is your basis or back for suggesting that Pen One uh, or MCD owns it? Yeah. So my basis is that it as our our your district has some very narrow, as a very narrow mission, provide flood control and drainage. Drainage doesn't happen unless that pump station exists. And so at least the drainage doesn't, isn't complete <laughs> unless that pump station exists. For most properties, there's, there's exceptions, as I've noted. Um, and it, from my limited perspective, it feels like since it's an essential part of drainage, that it's something that this this district should and the board should seriously consider including as an asset because um, it's otherwise this becomes a hot potato, uh, and um, I, I know BES isn't isn't Jones in that uh, 
uh, adding it to their asset portfolio. And it, to me, it feels right. Um, you know, almost money aside, which is hard to do, uh, it feels right that it's, this is an essential part of the drainage and it should be part of your portfolio, similar to the other drainage districts. Um, you're absolutely right. It comes with a big cost. Um, we already pay for uh, upkeep of that pump station just through um, annual routine maintenance and some preventative maintenance. But those are, those are small dollars. Uh, relatively speaking, it's the it's the repairs, major repairs, and uh, the replacements that um, is when the rubber will hit the road. Um, and I'm hopeful that similar to this situation, that uh, when we have major repairs, um, we can look for similar grant opportunities to offset those costs. Um, and to the um, if all goes well, um, we'll have a new district uh, when major repairs and replacements, uh, a replacement is needed. You build the pump station and it's operational by 2028, you won't need to do it again until 50 years later. And, but you'll have to replace the pump. You'll have to do a couple other things as well in the interim, which will be tens of thousands, if not more than $100,000. Um, but at that point, you'll have uh, a little more leverage um, to be able to dis dis uh, distribute those costs um, to a broader uh, to a broader population. Okay, thanks, Claudio. Great, Bill. That's really helpful. And actually, you know, the memo is helpful. I just really appreciate your 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 bringing this to us so so clearly. So I just wanted to to kind of run through, make sure that I understand a, a couple of things. So. Um, so as I'm just kind of thinking through uh, through the, the the you know the the, the facts here. So um, the 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 previous project was a BES funded project. Is that correct? The the, uh, the one that there. we're for the, the for PIR pump station, the one that's been kind of ongoing. That's that's one that that BES supported, right? Is that uh, exactly. today in order in order to to kind of keep us uh, keep us moving in terms of uh, you know keeping the structure at least uh, in place. So. So and and that's we're going to be discussing that next about the about sort of preserving some of those funds for for continued work there, right? That's correct, Claudio. The 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 BES is paying for that structural rehab project. They also paid for the replacements uh, of some of either the pumps or and or motors in, for for both units right. in the pump station recently. Great, and and uh, you know, um, my understanding is that that ownership of the pump station, the, the actual pump station, is unclear at this point. But uh, if you know, my, if, you know, my team is happy to work. Uh, my putting on my parks hat, my team is happy to work with with you guys to to sort out whatever agreements we need to get in place to make that work. Um, so, uh, and 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 you know, obviously, we're uh, looking to contribute. You know, and it's in your memo that we're looking to contribute. The city is looking to contribute to. Uh, the match payment for the replacement of the pump station, um, and did, and just that the, did I hear that the pretty much all the drainage uh, in in the district or nearly all the drainage in the district kind of uh, ends up at this at this pump station. Which one? Which which properties are excluded? So the only ones that don't drain are those um, who net, whose um, surface naturally um, uh, dips towards the Columbia River. So okay. if you go along Marine Drive, that's a, that includes a partial, of course, all the properties on the Riverward side of the levee, hmm. uh, also many of the properties uh, just on just on the south side that that, that uh, front Marine Drive drain towards the river. The okay. back end of some of those properties actually yeah. do drain towards this pump station. But yeah. Okay. And you mentioned the Vanport pump station. It, it, it's it's but it sounded like that's in, in, internal. Where did, where does that pump to? Right, so it's it's a lift station, so it's internal, so it, it, it drains um, the wetlands. Expo Center and some of the right of way we talked about, and all it does, it, it, it pumps water up, you know, X feet, 10, 15 feet. So it then drains into a open channel or a ditch that's just on the south, south side of Expo and that water eventually drains to PIR. Okay, okay. so they, they work in sequence. So really that, 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 that sort of catchment area ultimately drains through the pump station to, to the PIR pump station as well. Right. Yeah, I mean, so with, with all that in mind, I mean, it sounds like we're working well with the city to, 
you know, we've got we've been working through multiple funding sources to get get uh, get the uh, the the pump station rebuilt. But it sounds like it's critical to you know the functioning of the entire district. Um, and as as Jeff said, you know, uh, at, you know, at some point it breaks. We don't want to be back in a situation where people are kind of doing one of these and saying like, yeah, who's going to pay for it now? Uh, it seems like if 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 we as a district are in charge of you know internal drainage we want to control our destiny and we're kind of a, it sounds like we're at a point where where we've got uh got a lot of resources flowing to try and make this uh, to to get it back up to to where it needs to be and we're about to transition to an urban district that'll hopefully have the the long-term resources to maintain it and and we'll be unified as a you know as a as a district to to make sure that we you know, we take care of the assets that deliver the service that you know uh, that uh, utility payers are paying for, so uh, it feels right to me if we if we took on ownership. Okay, additional thoughts, Jeff, or questions? Okay, um, I think I'll just offer up echoing a lot of what Claudio said, I think this does also make a lot of sense to, to me. Um, I was actually surprised. I, I think when um, when this grant application for FEMA came about and we were talking about it or something like this, that this district didn't already own that, um, that pump station. Uh, it, it just, you know, makes a lot of sense to me and hearing again that all the other districts tend to own that asset. Um, it does show up on our, um, show up a lot on our asset like our list and stuff like that so again it was a little confusing to me that we did not own it already um i also want to be clear that this is a moment where we're just it's a first step in a process right so we are just authorizing you to begin negotiations around an iga um, not the actual iga itself what that could look like could look like a bunch of different things we also might have more information um, when we get to the point of actually seeing an IGA about the status of the FEMA grant, which I think to Jeff's point, I think we would feel, I, I would at least feel a lot more comfortable knowing that, you know, it's looking really, really good to have that replaced um, fully and uh, in, in, in taking that on. So just I'm seeing nodding heads all around about what I'm saying is, is fairly accurate. Okay. Great. Think, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're all really conscious of the need to protect Pen One's interests and ensure we have the appropriate financial backing, either from the city of Portland and other parties in Pen One. And more importantly, that we build that into the revenue model for the urban district. Um, and my perspective is similar to all of yours, which if we're going to be the flood safety district, we need to control our destiny and build that, and do it right. And um, as much as we love our partners and we're really blessed in this case that the port and Metro and everybody are being helpful, um, it's gonna be simpler and less expensive for everybody if we clarify all this, I think. Right. Well, I think uh, I would love to entertain a motion. Sure, I see uh, um, there was one popped into the uh, comment section there. So I'm happy to put it out there, although I'm gonna, take out a, a word perhaps, see if anybody objects. So I move to authorize staff to begin negotiations with the city of Portland regarding the ownership of the PIR pump station on behalf of Pen One. I, I don't think the term long, I don't think the word long-term is appropriate. I just think we gotta figure out who the heck's gonna own this thing. Right. So that's my, that's my motion like the the adjustment and i'll second that wonderful okay um we will take a vote uh jeff yes claudio yes i say the other folks who are not here correct no i don't have to okay awesome oh, you don't know they're gone no. yeah okay uh annalisa yes just want to take a sec to let the board members who are present know that James Allison has been awesome in helping us with all of this and um, just want to make sure you know we really appreciate all the time and energy he's putting in and he's super collaborative and doesn't want to saddle the district with unnecessary costs so um, in his absence I hope his ears are burning we really appreciate James. Thank you Jim. Um, moving on through our agenda um, Liz I believe you are up next. I am. I'm going to let Bill cue it up for me. Yeah. So um, 
you know, thanks for being willing to see my face for a little bit longer. Um, so we're on the same topic, the PIR pump station, and we've uh, just referenced um, the existing projects that uh, we uh, that you'll authorize at your last board meeting, uh, at your um, uh, your annual meeting last um, uh, last June to as part of your budget approval, uh, and that's to provide some structural stability. Um, for this pump station. Um, when I first started back in 2015, we had just received a report from um, one of our structural engineering firms and it said it had three to five years left of useful life. And so I was put myself in the position to tell the city and others that I wasn't going to uh, ask any of our staff to walk into the pump station um, because of concern about uh, its safety. But since then, we felt that um, it was safe enough to continue walking there for the time being, but we needed a plan to stabilize that structure um, before the um, facility is replaced. So um, we started that process, uh, as Claudio mentioned earlier, it's uh, funded completely by the city of Portland um, BES um, Bureau. Um, it not only covers consultant time, but also staff time as well for MCD staff time. So um, it, uh, the city is very uh, um, gracious to, to help us out with, with that work. Um, we've reached the 30% design uh, for that project. And so it's standard uh, to take a breath at that point and decide and identify what we've seen and what we found during pre-design. Uh, and then confirm whether or not we want to move forward. In this case, um, we're, we're offering a recommendation that we stop design for now uh, and um, wait for um, confirmation whether or not we uh, can obtain uh, this FEMA grant to replace the pump station. And um, if we did so, um, we would want to be able to set up uh, either, and this, this part now deviates from the, the, um, the one page memo you, you, you've read prior to the meeting. Um, we want to set up a, uh, a process to either one, create a reserve account, uh, a reserve funding um, to be able to install an emergency pumping system if the pump station does fail before the new replacement pump station is online, or two, funding to uh, obtain um, and procure um, those pumping systems to install right away if the pump station fails. So either, um, but we would need $325,000 for that reserve account or purchase um, that amount. So um, I, as you well know, um, the uh, uh, the district doesn't have $325,000 just laying around. And so we would need to, um, to talk to our partners, particularly with the city of Portland, about um, options, uh, funding options um, to, um, to collect that, that, that dollar amount. Uh, it could be from the city, it could be through grants, it could be through other options, but um, we haven't uh, approached the city per se about this specific topic. Um, we have informed them and James is well aware of this that uh, we may be pausing the project um, in, in, in part to um, see if a, a, the grant is successful and possibly take on the risk that the pump station could fail in the interim uh, before the, um, the pump station, the new pump station is operational. So I wanted to uh, tee up uh, Liz's conversation a little bit, or uh, this presentation a little bit with that information. It, uh, as I said, deviates a little bit from what um, the board action was noted in the proposal here, but ultimately uh, our recommendation is uh, for y'all to consider us to stop design currently um, and to um, begin negotiating with the city of Portland for alternative um, funds to um, support a emergency pumping system um, if we get the, the grant awarded. So with that, I'll turn it over to Liz and, uh, and we'll wrap it up then, thanks. Hey, 
think so. Yep. Um, so I am just going to recap some of the points that we've hit today because I do feel it is important to the subject matter of this conversation. So apologies for some of the heavy repetition in here. Um, but as Bill mentioned, we've, we've heard from several different sources uh, and have observed ourselves that the PIR pump station is nearing the end of its useful life. Um, it is, it was constructed in 1940s. It flooded during the Vanport floods. There was a fire in the 1960s during which the walls and the roof and the mechanicals were replaced, but the flooring and the structure didn't receive any substantial improvements. And there have been none made to the station since then. So the mechanicals are very worn. The fact that this is a building above water that hasn't had any substantial maintenance has really put a tax on the piers upon which the building sits upon. Um, and it was noticed after the 96 flood how bad that degradation on the piers had become. So uh, concrete encasement was applied around the piers to help protect the wood. And that's been starting to substantially fail as well. And there's pretty significant concern that the pump station will, uh, would have failed before Pen One was able to fund the replacement for the station. So that was what prompted this structural upgrade project, which BES is currently funding. That was added to the CIP in 2020, and then we started pre-design on that in 2021. Uh, and then shortly after starting pre-design for the structural upgrades, we became aware of that grant through FEMA, which would cover 75% of the design and then 75% 70 of construction if the project is viable. Uh, so we did submit an application for the grant in January of this year. And hearing from our partners at the state, they are feeling very confident that this is a project that would likely be funded. Uh, there was enough grant money in that pot that we should be, that FEMA would be able to fund this and all of the applications that were submitted. And we know that we have passed the completeness check. So it's into its next round of review. Um, but in the meantime, we continued design on the structural repairs because we didn't know the fate of the grant or what trajectory that was going to take when we became aware of it in summer, summer 2021. Uh, so the, in going through that work, we have found that the repairs are much more involved, they're much more invasive, they're much more complicated than we had anticipated. The engineer had determined that repairing or repouring the concrete around the piers wouldn't provide any additional structural benefit. And so the remedy is to drive 14 piles and build basically an entire new exterior structural frame in which the building would rest upon. And so something to note about that is that this repair is intended for gravity loads only. So that means that these repairs can only handle the, the, the weight of the building, um, but it doesn't bring the structure up to code. So it wouldn't be able to, it isn't going to be designed to withstand a seismic event or any other sort of a natural disaster that would impact the building's foundation. And to make improvements to that point, again, we're basically just looking at repairing, or I'm sorry, at replacing the entire station. Um, and these repairs also don't include any updates to the mechanical equipment. Um, so that, that is very integral to the functioning of the pump station as well. You know, the pumps and the motors installed in 1960, the fact that they're 60 years old is well exceeding the typical useful life of pumping equipment and the electrical equipment that's associated with that. So um, as Bill mentioned, we are currently wrapping up the pre-design phase of the project. 
And we felt that this was a good time to stop and evaluate whether moving forward with this project, especially now that we know that we could potentially receive this grant and our chances are pretty good at that. And knowing that this project budget has increased significantly because the originally hoped for repairs are so much more significant than originally planned. Liz, can you um, comment on the following? This this board um, really has to make a decision about risk, right? Correct, so if yeah. Stop, if you stop the design and Theoretically, if we completely stop the project in lieu of, of starting a, a separate project to replace the pump station, we're rolling the dice a little bit, right? So um, it's not a the structure's not in good shape. Um, but um, can you comment on at least from a technical point of view, what risks you're we're taking on and why we feel that this solution is um, is something that we can ameliorate that risk? Yeah, I, I can speculate the risk that we're taking on. Obviously, I don't have a crystal ball into the future. And as an engineer, we're, we're told to not assume fates. Uh, but in terms of risk, we are certainly absorbing some by not moving forward with this project. Um, because there is the chance that this station might fail. That being said, we, we need to also acknowledge that there is a chance that the station might fail if there's an earthquake. Um, conversely, we are measuring the corners of the pump station every year through survey. And we have found that this station has not settled uh, since we've been taking these measurements. And the repairs that we would be doing would be to make sure that the pump station doesn't settle, um, result in that kind of failure. So the repairs that we're doing, if we weren't going to be building a new pump station in the foreseeable future, I, I would say that we absolutely should plan on going forward with these repairs because anything that we can do to mitigate the risk and elongate the life of this structure is really important. That being said, if we do these repairs next summer and we have a new pump station in, in 2028, and if we have an earthquake which causes that station to fail anyway, then we've sunk approximately $700,000 on repairing the structural, the structure for gravity loads, but not lateral loads. And then we'll have to come up with some way to temporarily bypass water out of the system until we have the new pump station turned on. And so then we've put ourselves into a whole different pot of risk and we've sunk a lot of money that we didn't need to in the first place. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, Liz. Uh, I guess the only thing I'll add to that really uh, uh, excellent explanation is that um, while Pen One is not necessarily paying for this project or our staff time per se, um, it, it's the same customers in the city of Portland uh, at least within the same boundaries, uh, is paying uh, through the city of uh, Portland's BES funds or supporting the project. So um, it's it's it's, um, it's it's not seven hundred thousand directly for um, Pen One property owners, but sort of indirectly. Um, anyway, so uh, I think that covers the primary elements of the staff presentation. So Liz and I are here to answer questions. Thanks. Audio. Yeah, no. Uh, thank you, Liz, for the for the explanation of risk. You know, I, I've learned from our asset managers to think about risk in terms of uh, likelihood and consequence, right? And so, in terms of consequence, 
Um, let's say, you know, let's say we're in this interim period, we're working towards a FEMA funded replacement. Uh, we, you know, it sounds like we're, we're holding steady in terms of the structure right now, but let's say the structure fails. Um, we have, you know, what do we do in event of a flood? What is the consequence? What, like, what, 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 do, like, how would the district approach that situation uh, to, 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 you know, get water out of the district? Absolutely, yeah. So we have investigated renting temporary pumping equipment and the mobilization of that equipment and the monthly operating cost of that equipment is almost equivalent to buying some sort of a quote unquote package kit. Um, and it basically looks like a really glorified sump pump that we're able to put on a platform and we would have to do some work to install it and get discharge lines that would be able to drain the water over the levee. Um, but the solution would be to basically build an outdoor new pumping station because the temporary measures which wouldn't become very temporary, you know, those are really more for in case of emergency, would, would be incredibly cost prohibitive as well, you know. And then again, that being said, setting up a structure like that without having some sort of a failure um, is, is spending money that we might not need to without a consequence, right? We're waiting for that consequence. Um, but this, as, as we talked about earlier as well, this is the one pump station that drains the Pen One Basin. So it is, it's a very important structure to this system. Uh, I would add to that response that the consequence would be that portions of the PIR racetrack will, will be um, underwater. Um, I don't know whether it's a foot or two foot, it just depends on where you are, I suppose, and, um, on that, within that property. And parts of the golf course uh, will start to become inundated, uh, so not all the holes would be accessible. Um, and so those would be the immediate concerns. Um, that's, um, I guess the only structures I think that are, would be at risk uh, initially would be the buildings at the PIR racetrack. Um, I think all the other structures, including the ones at the golf course and certainly up in Marine Drive, um, the, the likelihood of those structures receiving any type of inundation is pretty low. And, and just uh, to, you know, to follow up on, on the, you know, that sort of emergency measure that you described was like about how long would it take to stand that up and, and how long it would uh, um, would we have that inundation in the uh, golf course in PIR? Um, and, and I guess I, I don't know enough about the hydrology, but you know, is there, is there also some level of infiltration that would be happening as well? Sure. Uh, so I will start with the question of the uh, hydrology and the infiltration. So it, it really does depend on what sort of event has triggered this failure. If it is just general settlement, and if it happened in the summer, then the chances that we are seeing some sort of an impact like this is pretty unlikely. Um, if it is a flooding event and a giant log fell into the station and that's what caused the failure, um, we are working on doing some of the modeling right now for the Pen One Drainage Master Plan. And then we will be doing some more modeling in depth as part of the FEMA grant. Um, but we don't fully know the answer to that. Um, Bill, do you want to comment on that any further before I move on? Uh, not much. I mean, there's the infiltration is really. It's really, really low in this area. So there'll be some ability for the soils to 
to soak in a little bit in the summertime, but honestly, that's not the period of time when the, the risk is. The risk is probably in the wet weather season. Liz, do you want to comment on the on the, the stand up time? Yep. The, yep. Mm -hmm. And then, so that that kind of also, quote unquote, depends on the nature of the emergency. Um, but if we are actively hands down deployed on this station, we should be able to work with local manufacturers to get this kit set up and delivered and hooked up hopefully within a period of a month. Um, you know, that, that again is kind of depending on if there is a very large seismic event, then there's going to be a lot of demand on manufacturing, construction, et cetera. Um, there would probably be less demand for the racetrack and, and golf services and, that and, and probably less demand for a racetrack and golf services yeah if it is a heavy flooding event the the likelihood that we would need the racetrack or the golf course fully functional sooner than other critical facilities is, as you have potentially implied as i'm implying uh probably less consequential don't tell my, my, my uh, the PIR manager I, I didn't, or, or, no, or the sorry. manager that I said I, that. I, I changed my, I, I'm the one who implied that, not you. <laughs> New meaning to the term water hazard. Yeah. Um, I want to do a, a time check. We have a CIP item. And I also want to say that I know, and I apologize, my, my daughter's finishing up her postgrad and she just got a job offer. So she was texting at the beginning of your presentation, Liz, but I also believe that this may be a mobile kit. And so we may be able to do some cost sharing. I don't know whether you brought that up. So the costs of this emergency thing, we may be, may be able to spread those costs across districts because it could be fungible. But Bill, I wanna check on the CIP item. I don't wanna cut this conversation short, um, but I know we're bumping up against time constraints. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, Chair Kohler and I just, Text uh, communicated through chat saying that I'm happy to defer that uh, item to another uh, time if needed. Honestly, that it's just a matter of that time was just there to clarify any information that was on in the meeting packet. All right, thank you, Bill. Jeff, are you wanting? I saw you had your hand up, but then yeah, no, I, thank you. I, I I just wanted to and, and thanks uh, for the nice presentation. I, I just wanted to know. What do you need from us? What what what's the ask? I mean, I, I think I, I, that's not fair. I mean, I, I'll just speak for myself. I, I I think understand the issue. Um, I just as an aside, and even understanding that this is being recorded, I think if God forbid something traumatic happened, I think the city would come in and fix it, and would either put their hand out and look to us for to reimburse them, and then I'd say good luck. Um, because what are we going to do? Have a bake sale. But uh, um, so I, I guess my question is uh, what's the ask or what, what do you need from us to go forward? Yeah, let, me, let me try to take a, a, a stab at that, Jeff. Um, in short, I want, I'm hoping that, um, that you're feel, this board feels comfortable for us to stop design temporarily. That's one. And two, for us to explore funding options to um, to purchase for this uh, this package kit um, in case we need to um, to purchase that, install it um, if the uh, if we get the grant um, and we don't do anything for the structure for the next I guess six years. Or do you accept the risk wholly enough to say, what are we going to do to have a big sale? <laughs> well, I appreciate that. That's excellent, Bill. That that's exactly what I was looking for. Uh, but you know, isn't it true that you know, let's assume you know, best case scenario, we we do get the grant, but we're still, you know, it, it makes sense to go down both paths and do all your research necessary because we could be, you know. You, knocking on the door of just a couple months of finalizing installation and what have you. But until the time we flip the switch, you know, we're going to um, uh, still be in kind of 
emergency mode. So, um, you know, I, I'm already speaking for a motion that's not even made yet. But yeah, I, I certainly believe it's in our best interest to delay the design, to start looking for ways to fund um, these other types of, uh, uh, call them what you want, emergency uh, uh, procedures or uh, plans. But we would have to do that anyway, even if a big bucket of money landed in our laps tomorrow. Yeah, oh, you know, alternative, you could take it as a board, you could take the position that I'm not willing to accept that risk and we should move forward with the, uh, the structural rehab and um, reduce your risk dramatically for a failure um, for, the, for that period of time, um, in addition to going down a path to uh, replace the pump station. Bill, can you just quickly remind me, we are the FEMA replacement grant anticipated date could be as soon as this August, but could be as late as next August. Yeah, let Liz comment on that. That is correct, yes. Um, the, the FEMA typically says that the review timeline uh, is somewhere between 10 months and 18 months after application. Ours was a little bit more of a natural fit. And because it's the design and not the construction portion of the application, it's a little bit easier and faster to process as well. So they said it could be as soon as six months. So mm -hmm. that, that would be August. And then just to understand, assuming, um, you know, very hopeful on this FEMA replacement uh, grant, but, you know, should, for whatever reason, we shouldn't get it. How quickly could you pick back up, right? So this is, if I'm reading the motion, we're delaying some things. We're not, you know, it's like we're putting it on the shelf. So how quickly can you take it off the shelf? Do you want me to answer that, Bill? Yeah, okay. So uh, we would, we have the engineer on a task order if we found out that we weren't getting the grant we could start work you know pretty much immediately again we would just extend the contract date on the task order and get going depending on when we find out we there is the potential that we could still be in construction for those improvements as soon as next summer that would be more in the instance that we found out in august and the later it gets the less likely we would be able to do those improvements it has to the improvements have to be done in the in water work window so that really drives the schedule so if we find out in december we aren't going to be able to get a design permitted and bid to be in construction in June. So that would be 2024 then, okay. summer of 2024. Thank you. Any other questions? I don't know that if staff really wants to speak to this, but I know that uh, um, James uh, isn't with us today. Uh, he is uh, with the, the funder uh, BES. I'm just wondering if, uh, you know, there's, uh, do we want to have, uh, have a vote today? Would it make sense to include, uh, to make sure, uh, to include uh, uh, James and, and, and PJ? I think there's, uh, you know, uh, we're not, uh, we're, I think I've gotten to a level of comfort that uh, while there is a risk out there, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, a viable path for, for mitigating and managing it. Um, but just want to make sure that, uh, that you know, it, it might, it might make sense. And, and I, maybe this is a question more for, uh, for fellow board members. Um, do we want to, do we want to make sure that have a, have a, uh, a more comprehensive group, uh, to make that decision together? And is there, is there a time frame that we need to fit into? In terms of time frame, I think we have to know for for budgeting to include funds for next year or not for the completion of design of this project and starting construction and again you guys have some time on that um before that has to be done but 
I get the feeling from conversations with James that he would be on board with your direction, but I don't mean to speak on his behalf. Yeah. <laughs> Bill and Liz, you may have been in closer conversation with him. I know he's comfortable with the ownership question, whether he's okay with the delay of the structural issues, a little less clear to me, but I think he'd be okay with it. You guys talk to him as part of this? I, I've had a chance to talk to him and I, I, I would have the same response, um, but I don't want to speak for him. I, I, we've had that conversation, um, but with a large organization, it, um, they would want to make sure that not only his voice is heard, but others as well. So I, I don't think it's critical that you vote on this today. It feels like we have pretty good direction to delay, right? At least for the next, till the next meeting on the structural issues. And we have permission to start to spend staff time pursuing this kit. Um, and then obviously if we have um, our port and city representatives uh, on pen one next time and they have a different opinion and it sways the majority of the board, we can re, we can, whatever you do, you change your course. <laughs> we do what the board says. I, I would agree with that, Jim. I think that's summarized well, but, you know, to Claudio's point, and I think it's a good one as well. Um, my, I just think at some point we need to stop kicking the can down the road. And I mean, I do not feel delaying at this point is kicking the can, but, but uh, to Liz's point, I mean, I, I think we're either going to put it in a budget or not. We're go either going to get the grant or we're not. We're, you know, you, some of these things are outside of our control, of course, and you know, we can't speculate, but as soon as we know things, then we should make hard and fast decisions. Of course, we're always going to be nimble. Things change, you know, COVID hits, you know, but whatever. You know, we, but at the same time, I think there needs to be a plan and we need to execute it. But you know, as I said previously, you know, we could be, you know, at step 98 out of 100 steps of implementing this grand glorious replacement plan and some major event happens and then, <laughs> We got to do all the, uh, uh, you know, the, you know, the scotch tape and uh, duct tape and tubes uh, just to make something work anyway. So, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, no, I, yeah go, ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, uh, you know, the more you talk about it, the more I, I would feel more comfortable. I feel like, you know, questions of risk are always very theoretical until the risk manifests. Um, and to the degree that we're making a choice about whether to move forward on something that could potentially, uh, you know, if, if, you know, the, that, that happened within this period of time, I want to make sure that, that the entire board is, is on, uh, is on board uh, with the choice. Uh, it feels, it feels like a nothing, not a nothing choice, obviously, but like, it's theoretical right now, but, you know, if it happens, uh, uh, you know, three years from now, uh, and we're all looking at each other, wait, who's, who's, who thought this was a good idea? I, I want to make sure that we all know that we, we all said to each other it was a good idea. Metro's fault. Come on. <laughs> no, um, I think that I think that's a thoughtful instinct, Claudio. And just, you know, in terms of keeping team pen one together, it, it, I don't think it implicates the work program very much. Okay. All right, we're kicking that can down the road is what I'm hearing. But you guys are okay to not do any work on structural and get going on the emergency pump. Yep. Don't spend right. any money other than staff time. Right. I'll move to delay the design and construction of the PIR pump station structural updates until the award status of, fee, of the FEMA replacement grant is known. And I'll also add, but but and also authorize staff to uh, continue to seek uh, ways to fund, call it, you know, emergency. Um, measures. Measure, thank you, Bill, uh, to fund emergency measures for the pump station. In the event of a pump station failure or something like that. I'm excited to have that capacity to convey water mobily, by the way. So yeah. that's why I want to get some others to help you pay for it. Yep. Yeah. So are we okay holding a motion uh, for holding the motion over for for next time for when we've got uh, kind oh, of full full crew? That's fine. I think that I would recommend that that we just hold yep. for a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. great. I withdraw my motion. Great. We can save it. It's so well put. We'll use it next time. Hardly. <laughs> okay. I think that that if I'm right, does that wrap everything up? 
Okay, well, um, thank you all and look forward to seeing you in about a month. Great, here's to hoping for a stable pump station for at least a few months. Yeah, I'll stop it. <laughs> a couple of years, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank Thanks you guys all. very thank much. You. It's always thank you all so much, really you. appreciate it. You guys are my favorite board. Just want you to know. Oh, you say that to board. every board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take care. All right. Thanks, everyone. There's the recording.